Go back to my PowerPoint. Here we go. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Jenny Drager. I'm a training services consultant with Ex Libris. Um, Marlon should be here pretty soon. Help me out with questions um, from support from customer support. So today is the first of six sessions in the knowledge acceleration program. We also call it CAP. So sometimes I might just say CAP instead of knowledge acceleration program. So next week on May 10th will be will be the second part of fulfillment config. And I'll tell you about uh, more about that session when we're done talking today. And in the weeks after that, you see, we'll get into acquisitions, electronic resource management, CDI or central discovery index and analytics. A few points about WebEx. We are using WebEx for this series. If you ever encounter any audio or video issues, just exit and rejoin the WebEx session. I've even had people where the audio dropped off in the middle of the session. And I'll always confirm that someone can still hear me. If that happens to you again, just leave and come back. The meeting is being recorded and made available. It'll be made available to you on the series dashboard. I did put that link in the chat and I'll do that again later as well. Now, if you do have questions during the session, please in WebEx chat, choose all panelists. And so uh, what that'll do is you can ask your question. Now, I'm not gonna be keeping a close eye on the chat during the session. I am gonna be doing my presenting, but we should have time at the end to go back and cover any, uh, any topics, any questions that come up. Okay, so uh, this is our agenda. Our first session on fulfillment configuration. We're going to be looking at library circ desks. We're going to be looking at blocks, both system applied and operator applied. We'll look at overdue loan profiles and processes and also fulfillment job configuration and scheduling that that little tool. In next week's session, we'll talk about other areas of fulfillment configuration, including policies, terms of use, fulfillment units and calendars. OK, but for this week, we're going to start with circulation desks. Um, and so I'm using the environment I'm using is one of our Alma sandbox environments. Um, and let's just say it, we've got a lot of cooks in this kitchen. <laughs> so there's sometimes some kind of uh, and we test in here. So there might be some interesting kind of rules or or names or uh, titles <laughs> because um, my team uses it for um, for a number of a number of uh, activities related to the work we do. But it's not representative of your system. So let me go back here into Alma. Um, okay, so let's go into configuration. Now, when you go into configuration, remember you do have the institution, whatever your institution name is. And in my environment here, it's called training sandbox. And then uh, the different libraries within that institution here. So circulation desks, configuration for circulation desks occurs at the library level. You might have one library, you might have more than one library in your institution. <clears throat> and so I do need to go into the library level of configuration. And then I'm going to go to fulfillment. Under library management, you're going to see circulation desks right here. So at this library, at my main library, I have three circulation desks. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the default circulation desk, and you will have one here with that code default underscore circ underscore desk. And you need to keep that one with that code. You can go in and edit it and make changes to what you call it, but we need that that code is important, that default circ desk code. So we don't want you to make a new one. We just want you to use that existing one. Um, so we have five tabs of information here on our first one. 
Um, and I, well, let me also say this for some of this, you, it may be a review. Um, you might find yourself still tweaking your configuration. Um, for others, you might have questions after coming up, um, coming up after being live for a little while, or maybe you'd like to offer a new service or make some adjustments to your environment. Okay, so here on this general details tab, we can see um, the name for the circ desk and it can be edited. We can also see that this circulation desk is the primary circ desk at that library. That's why we need that default underscore, you know, that code is locked down. Um, so what that as as a primary circ desk, what that means is it can check items out or in, uh, check items out for another library. Uh, this is not a reading room desk. Um, a circ desk can either be a reading room desk or a traditional circ desk, but not both. It can only serve as one. Uh, picks from shelf. So what that means is in the Alma tasks, when you have items that need to be pulled off the shelf, whether it's for resource sharing or digitization or, or move requests, whatever they are, uh, that pick from shelf list will show up when an operator is logged into this circ desk. So not all of your circulation desks have to offer pick from shelf if that does not work with your model. Uh, we also have um, the option to support personal delivery. So that's a service level. You can um, choose, you know, and how you monitor or how you offer that. Um, so you might have distance learning students. They could make requests and have materials sent to them via mail courier or some other means, or um, maybe for faculty. Maybe you'll do that for them as well. Um, supports uh, registering new users. So at, at this circulation desk, if a new user needs to be um, registered, maybe it's a, a community borrower, some sort of courtesy patron, I can do that at this circulation desk. Um, we also have the ability to override the return date. So on the, when you're in the Alma menu and checking in materials, you can, you have the power to override that return date. You know, if you don't have fines, that's kind of negligible, but if, if you do have fines, that might be more important to you. If I come down a little bit further, we have time to reshelve. So the time to reshelve allows a library to set an interval and it's only in hours for items that are returned to make it back to the shelves. So during that interval, Alma, and Primo V, they display a status indicating that the item is available, but awaiting reshelving. I think that's what it is. Awaiting reshelving is that text, uh, that default text that shows up. Um, after that interval expires, the status updates to show that the item is on shelf. So in that first, like I said, if it's if it's one hour, so for that that first after hour after an item is checked in, it'll show that awaiting reshelving so that your staff and your borrowers know it might be on the shelf, it might be on a shelving cart. Look in both places before you give up. Um, and also I do wanna mention the um, time interval hours, they're clock hours, not open hours. So if you check something in right before closing, by the time you open that interval will have, will have probably expired. The delay for hold notification, what that is, it defines how long Alma will wait before sending a notification to a patron, informing them that an item is now available for pickup on the whole shelf. You can see that one comes in minutes. So maybe you want um, a 15 minute interval, a 10 minute interval, whatever it is from when you trap a hold before that notification will be sent to the uh, borrower. If this field, if either of these fields are blank, um, you know, that on hold shelf or that hold notification status will go out immediately. So blank is no, um, no lag in time whatsoever. Um, so after that delay interval, like the delay for hold notification, Alma sees to see Checks to see if the um, request remains active before sending the notification to the to the patron. 
Um, on the additional information, you can say it just, you can add a description of the library if you wish. It's not required information. Uh, completely up to you. And this map function is not currently in use this field right here. Now, I'm sure you've uh, done a little work with printing already in your library. You've done that testing during. While you were going through implementation. So here we can associate a default printer or a print queue with the circulation desk. Um, you can also add additional printers. So for libraries that have only the, the default printer selected, that'll be the printer um, used for all non-automated print shops. For libraries that do include other printers in the additional printers field, the CERC desk operators can um, select where to print. When the library does add uh, new printers, this is an area that you'll need to come in and adjust. Creates return receipts is used to automatically generate a return receipt letter to be emailed to the patron or printed at the CERC desk. And then create loan receipts is used to generate a notification that says you have just checked out this item and it will again either be sent to an email message to the user or printed at the CERC desk. So these are sent to um, just email. They'll go there if. You don't want to, you know, be a spammer. <laughs> Maybe uh, people aren't so concerned about return receipts or whatever. Um, you can just check and uncheck those as you need. So going down a little bit further, looking at the hold shelf information. Any circulation desk that provides hold shelf services needs to have um, this has hold shelf function enabled. So if you do have a surf desk that doesn't have a hold shelf, you just leave that unchecked and you are good. But the hold shelf go, it kind of goes hand in hand with that pick from shelf option we saw up higher on this uh, form. So the hold shelf sorting selects uh, or sets a default value when viewing the items, a list of items on the hold shelf. You can see you have different options. Requester name is probably the most popular. How long do you hold an item once it's trapped on the hold shelf? <clears throat> Before the hold expires. This has hold shelf processing. Um, what that does is, oh, I should also say, so this maximum time on hold shelf. You've got a value here. Um, this. There's also a value in the um, fulfillment TOUs that says how long you'll hold an item on the whole shelf. This setting takes precedence over the policy that may be in place for the item, but only if the policy says that item can stay longer on the whole shelf. So if the whole shelf policy says seven days and this says five days, the five days is going to win. Um, on the other hand, if the item policy says it can only say on the hold shelf for a shorter amount of time, let's say the, the um, item policy says it's a three day hold, um, then the sh that time takes, pre uh, press or, um, takes precedence. So the shorter hold time between this value right here and the policy will take precedence when Alba determines that the hold needs to expire, um, go back to the shelf, go to the next borrower, et cetera. The has hold shelf processing can be enabled to indicate that the circulation desk can temporarily store items that require processing before they're placed on the hold shelf. So if you enable this function and you trap an item for a hold, um, the item goes into this processing status. And um, so if you have work to do to ready this item for that hold, and it'll also take another scan to take off this processing status and put it on the hold shelf. So be aware of that, that there is an additional scan involved, or if um, you happen to notice that when you trap an item, it goes into this processing status, this is why this box is checked in your environment. Where this is especially important is if you have a self-check machine. 
So if you have a self-check machine, you probably want to check that box because if items are returned via the self-check machine, um, there are two possible outcomes. If hold, have hold shelf processing is enabled, the items go into that processing. You can get them out of the bin, scan them, put them on the hold shelf. Or if that isn't checked, then the items um, go immediately to the hold shelf and they may not be there if the notification goes out. Okay, so let's keep going down here. Um, notify patron of um, canceling expired hold. What that'll do is it'll just, if the if a hold does get expired, it'll send an email notification to them. <clears throat> the next area here, digitization department. If this circulation desk serves as a digitization department, department, excuse me, um, this is where you would acknowledge that by checking supports digitization. If you have a dedicated digitization department, obviously you wouldn't check this on your default circ desk. And then the work time and days, it's informative. It's not intended to guarantee that work would be um, completed, but you know, it's kind of a goal. How long do you want to, to turn that around in order to um, meet the need of your borrowers and, and execute that service for them? So going down to payment information, this is where libraries indicate what kind of payment the library accepts for um, any sorts of fines and fees that come up. If online payment is an option at your institution, um, an integration profile with an e-payment system also needs to be created. If your library prefers to print receipts, um, the print receipt option needs to be set to yes. Many libraries choose to have a copy of the receipt sent to an internal email address as part of their audit control practices. So that's what that option is showing. Um, I did see a question come in and I am watching the chat. Um, did you just, and the, the question is, is does a library have to have an Alma D, Alma digital license to support to use the supports digitization option. Those are actually two different things. Um, supports, supports digitization is a service level to where you might copy an article from a print resource, you know, digitize it and send it to a borrower or maybe a chapter out of a, out of a resource and send it to a borrower. So that is a service you may provide your borrowers. We're Alma Digital or Alma D. What that is, that is storing images in Alma um, digital asset management of resources. In, as opposed to using like products like Content DM. Um, I cannot, I haven't thought about those in a while, so I can't think of other uh, products right now. So digitization is a service you may provide to your borrowers, to your community where Alma Digital is storing, managing um, digital content for your borrowers, discoverable in Primo or um, Summon. Okay, the last item on this form is um, self-check information. So if your library has implemented self-check or plans to at some point in the future, this is part of the information that helps with setup. If we select this, um, we have to enter in, you'll see more information pop up about a self-check integration profile um, that would need to be created and associated with the CERC desk. So I'm gonna leave that unchecked because I don't want Alma to yell at me about not filling stuff in. If your library um, adds, moves, removes locations, configure, configure oh, um, Hold on, let me go to, here we go, physical locations. So these are the physical locations associated with the circulation desk. Um, if your library um, adds, moves, removes locations, um, you'll have to come in here and edit this. You'll also see that 
this circulation desk, they can check in, check out, and reshelve materials for all of these locations. So uh, take a look at these. If you see some behavior you don't expect, you can always come in here and, and take a look. We're going to go over here to the work order types tab. It's possible that your library will have multiple types of work orders displayed on the screen. In most cases, work orders here will focus on CERC desk activities like missing items, items maybe needing repair if you do that at the circulation desk, and so on. So, and also in my in my environment here, this circulation desk also serves as the digitization department. So that's why you see that work order also associated with this desk. Now the operators tab, this is where um, the operators that can access this circulation desk, who will see this in their drop down menu in Alma, and you can even see the different roles, CERC Desk Operator, CERC Desk Oc Operator Limited, CERC Desk Manager, and Requests Operator. What you'll notice is this looks very familiar to roles you assign, but remember when you assign a lot of fulfillment roles, they need to be scoped. So if you are adding um, student workers or, or new employees, it's easier to come in here and click add operator, add that borrower, and then choose what role or roles they need. And then if they're no longer, you know, gonna they no longer need those roles, I can remove them right here and take them out of the queue. So then they would no longer access um, that CERC desk. Just a nice little shortcut. And remember, um, Alma does require closing down and coming back when you change a role. So if you're adding um, adding any role to someone or removing a role from someone, once you make that change, whether it's here or in their user record, have them log out and log back into Alma to see that change take, take effect. Um, and adding an, an operator, again, you just choose someone and choose which uh, role or roles they need and click add operator here. I'm already in here, so I don't need to uh, add myself again. So the last tab here is called automatic printing. This allows the library to specify rules for automated printing of request slips for items that need to be fetched from the shelf. So if an item isn't on shelf, the request process begins when the circulation desk scans the item. Um, right now, the default rule down here, if I look at this default printing rule, it says no printing. Um, so with the output parameters, so um, with output parameters, excuse me, let me go back in here. Um, you have different options. Do you or which printer do you want to use? So you could see there is a rule in place before we get to the default. And let's go take a look at that. If you're familiar with setting up any sort of conditional rules, fulfillment units, this form should look somewhat familiar. So our rule is here. If we've called it building nine print request slips, that's our ominous name for our quote unquote remote storage, I guess we're calling it. So we're saying if the location of the material equals building nine, then do automatically print it and send it to the building nine printer. And so the staff over there will um, get those print slips, pick slips, they'll go get their, you know, um, get those materials serviced and sent wherever they need to be. Um, you can add additional printers too, or I'm sorry, add additional conditions. So let me hit clear and hit cancel up here. So if I want to add a new rule, what are my options here? So my options here are just location and material type for these. So you can have both of them and you can always do location in list if you have more than one location that would uh, be affected by this rule. 
material type, the same thing. It could be either contains in list is empty is not empty, not equals. So, does this need to apply to more than one material type? Only one, only if it's blank, et cetera. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and go to our blocks. I do see some other questions come in and I will get those at the end. I wanna make sure I cover all the content and um, that we have time for that. Um, so looking for blocks where that happens is back at the institution level. So back here in configuration, I'm gonna go back to, to the institution level. You'll see when in configuration, when we go to institution, this uh, list gets a lot uh, longer, the Alma menu. So I'm going to go under fulfillment, physical fulfillment, this section, and you'll see block preferences. So configuration um, block preferences, what they do here is they you let you control how various situations are handled based on <clears throat> an item status, user status. Now this table does get longer. Um, I always recommend to keep an eye on release notes. I'm trying to stretch this out because sometimes it's still at 33. Okay, it's been at 33 for a little while, but a new block might happen based on, you know, new development in Alma. And so um, this table can change as Alma matures and grows. So if I look at different um, rules here, the loan regular due date con um, conflicts with a booking request. So if you're not doing booking, this is kind of a non-issue. You shouldn't run into it. But if you do do booking in your um, in your library, what should the what should the behavior be? You're going to block this loan. Would you allow everyone, meaning Cirque Desk Manager, Cirque Desk Operator, Cirque Desk Operator Limited, can override it? Um, override only by manager, only by operator, or handle automatically. I'm going to show you a good example of handle automatically a little bit later. Um, the option here, shorten due date to the last possible due date, so still let it go out. But it's going to be a shorter loan period to get it back for that booking request. Um, let's go into some others that aren't so specific. What if the calculation is item is not loanable? You have to have cert desk manager privileges to override that loan. If the item is not renewable, it says override by operator. What that means is either the operator or the manager can override, but not operator limited. Some situations are just a hard block. This item can be loaned only from the reading room desk. Block, there's no, you know, do not pass go, do not collect $200. You do not get that material. Um, you can change this, but, you know, so you have to say, what is what is what do you expect Alma to do in this situation and set these blocks accordingly? Um, item does not belong to this institution block. Item cannot be loaned to patron insufficient due date. Again, hard block. Item cannot be um, loaned due to booking request. Item is requested by another patron block. So if the if the if there's a request for that other patron, do you want to let this one go out? Does the, um, so what this says is we're going to block it. We're not going to let the person take it out because another person has requested it. Restart the request since the item is no longer available. Um, I think that would go along with the override options. Um, so you'll see another of op a number of options, patient kit. Patron's cash limit exceeded. Again, you have to be a manager, not, not operator or operator limited. Now, remember, if you run into any of these and go, what is that again? One of my favorite shortcuts in Alma is to go help, help for this page. And this will bring you to the documentation for whatever page you're on.
Okay. And it'll take you here. And you're going to see a table that describes each of these blocks and your options. A really important one I like to pay attention to is item is on loan. Uh, where is it in this list? Sometimes I can't. Okay, here's one that doesn't allow parallel loans. That might be a concern for you. Item is is currently on loan by another patron. So if you have this set to block and let's say someone had this book is according to Alma, it's checked out. I come up to the desk with it in my hand and you try to check it out to me. Alma says this is on loan by another patron and it blocks this circulation. So what you have to do, what your staff members, they have it in their hand. Um, so what they have to do is they have to stop this transaction. They have to check this in and then come back into my patron record and check it out. So that is the workflow if this is blocked. If this is override by all, Alma will pop up a note that says, hey, this book is checked out by someone else. And you would just click override by all and that will create a note on the loan that the um, item requ required an override and, and the note will explain what it was. Um, and then, but it'll let this transaction go through and what it meet and your staff won't have to end this transaction and go do a check back in. So whatever the behavior you want, Alma can manage it. Um, a lot of, if you do handle automatically, no notification will pop up on screen. Alma will check this in or check it in from that other patron and check it out to this patron. And you won't even know that um, there was anything um, suspect about the transaction. People, people, some libraries that I work with, they really want to know, oh, why wasn't that checked in? And that override by all will give them that notification and they could track that notification in analytics uh, to, you know, and follow up on those. Um, handle automatically. If you don't have fines and fees and you just want to get the, the item to the patron and it doesn't matter, you can just set that to handle automatically. That's the big block I like to point out. <clears throat> but just test those scenarios in your environment and make sure Alma's doing what you expect. And if it's not doing what you expect, come back here and, and redo those settings. I'm not a big fan of workarounds. I'm a big fan of making Alma do that work for you. Okay. And another thing is these options here, they're hard coded. You can't add a, oh, handle automatically. It just doesn't work with this scenario. Um, now, if I come back here to my PowerPoint, um, this is just talking about what each of those means. Uh, what does block mean versus override by manager versus override by operator, override by all. So you'll still get that notification, but it does pop up on the screen. If you have a network zone, so, um, um, that there will be one more option in your environment. So fulfillment network members to configure whether or not overrides can be for, performed by staff operators at another institution if the block occurs. So be aware of that if you're a network zone. So if, if it is override by all, this is where, or override by anything, this is where that little loan notes will show up. And if you go read it, you're going to see what the um, what the notes were. Now, in this case, uh, I owed a little too much money. But whatever that override was will show up here. Very clear. So blocks need to uh, be configured to follow your library's policies. And staff operators at CERC desks need to understand what to do when different scenarios occur so they can respond appropriately. Now, um, let's go and take a look at user blocks. So back here in Alma, back here, fulfillment, patron configuration, User blocks, do, 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 do. patron configurations, user, we have 
user block description and we have user block definition. So we're going to start with user block description. So these are some just a list. User suspended, it's a consortial block. Pat patron consistently returns books late, disruptive behavior, personal item left, too many claims returned, whatever you want here. Um, maybe you want the ability to suspend users under certain circumstances. Maybe you want to be more attentive to borrowers because they're uh, returning books late. Maybe you want a way to call attention to a patron because they left personal belongings in the library, whatever it is. Um, you can add a row right here if needed. So back here, now let's go look at user block definitions. So <clears throat> what they, these are also configured at the institution level. We can see the descriptions of that other list. And now here is what happens if um, this block is placed on a borrower. So oop, I'm trying to get a hold of my mouse here. Um, we have these blocked action variables here. And zero one, what that means, it blocks only the loan. Um, zero two would block loans or renewals. So this claimed return, you know, someone that always says, oh, claim return, claim return, I, I dropped that off. This would block them from, um, if they had this claimed return block on their borrower record, they would not be able to um, loan or renew something. And then 03, so item left behind, this is a block of loans, renewals, and hold requests. That seems a little, um, severe for item left behind, but you do want to get their attention to give them uh, whatever they borrowed here. <laughs> but those are those behaviors. Um, if a user suspended with black action 01, um, they just can't take out any new materials. Um, consistently returning items late has blocked action 02, which means patron is blocked from loans and renewals. And these would be renewals you do unless it was overridden or loan or renewals they could do out in discovery. A disruptive patient patron has block action 03, so this gets triggered um, if the patron tries to borrow, renew, or place a request. So maybe we should change this one to 03. And this one could be a little more lenient just to, again, um, get their, and I'm going to hit click save. I'm going to correct that. There we go. Okay, if you need other combinations like a uh, block for resource sharing request, open up a case with uh, support and they'll be able to help you add in another combination there. And don't forget help for this page is your friend. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about overdue. Get back here to the PowerPoint. Let's talk about um, overdue and lost loan profiles. Again, we're configuring this at the institution level. So under config, we're in config. We're going to go to fulfillment, physical item fulfillment, overdue and lost loan profile. Right here. So he here's a list of profiles that are defi already defined. Your institution may have many more than this. And if I look at lost loan rules, students lost. Okay. So we have, um, let's look at this one. We have lost loan rules for, let's do the 30 days here. Edit. So this is set to active. What that means is this rule is in effect. We have a profile type. Um, so what happens, we're going to send a notification if um, an item is still not checked in 30 days after due date. It's going to trigger um, a block. It's going to trigger um, a notification, a letter sent out to them, and there is a condition here. So you have to be an undergraduate student 
for this uh, profile to proceed. So this is notifying them, maybe placing a block um, to that user group. Now notice if that item is still lost or in that state after 45 days, what happens then? So um, again, it's active. They're gonna send that letter. We're gonna add that block. But what's going to also happen, do, 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 do. oh, this one should be, oh, I'm in the wrong one. Hold on. Let me get back to 45 days. Edit. So what's going to happen here? This is active. It's going to change that material to lost, to lost. Um, so 45 days after something is due, it goes to lost. Um, that means also we could be triggering a replacement fine on the borrower record. You know, if the item gets turned in, it may be forgiven, and that's all dependent on the um, fulfillment unit rules and uh, TOUs, et cetera. So this now applies to borrowers that are part-time undergraduate students or graduate students. So uh, this is determining, yeah, when you send that notification on an overdue, when something triggers to lost. And what's going to happen to the item, to the borrower record, et cetera. So you can have, depending on how, you know, I don't ever want you to get more complex than you need to be, but you can have other qualifiers here, like particular locations, particular material types. Maybe you have more restrictive locations and material types based on cost of uh, materials, uh, maybe electronics, uh, maybe, you know, more sensitive or, uh, yeah, just more costly uh, resources you have in your library. You do, I also want to point out over here, you do have the option to run this rule right now as well. Um, here, as long as you have the roles to do so. So let's go ahead and let me just kick that one off. I don't know if I'll have much in there. So that executes the job. And remember, if I come back here into Alma and go to admin, monitor jobs, oh, it's still running. I didn't know how quickly it would happen. I don't think it happens a lot on this um, environment. There, it's done. Here's that lost loan. It processed two records, completed successfully. I can always go look at the report. So there we go. Um, and I think if I come in here, see how you can see the records actually that it happened that were changed. So if you ever have any question, especially about something that may have failed, you could always do your uh, your um, troubleshooting right here. Okay, how were these notifications activated? That's done in the terms of use and policy area. So let's go back to config, fulfillment, and terms of use and policies. Do, 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 do. Physical fulfillment, there we go. And I wanna go to one month, let me first off, um, let me limit this down to loans. And I want one month undergraduate student general. One month. Here we go. This one. This is the line I want. Edit. And if I go down here, okay. As we scroll down, you'll see in these lines 18, actually it goes up to 22. Uh, there are overdue notification fine types. These are progressive. So the first one is the initial notice. The next one might have different language as more notifications are sent to the patron. Or you might, like in this scenario, we're just using the same letter, we're not changing it. So maybe if you send 
because some people send multiple letters, they might send one, you know, one day overdue and then seven days and 15 and then maybe a 30 day go loss. So you can have these progressive notifications with different letters with different wording, or you can just use one. It's completely up to you, whatever works in your library. So, and these, so what these are doing, these are triggering those letters. And so let's go take a look at those letters. Again, we're back here in config. This is under the general section and we'll see letters and letters config. Oh, no, not components. Sorry about that. I don't want to do that one. Fulfillment. No, general. I always want to look under fulfillment. Letters config. Here we go. Now, the letter I want, I know it's on page three, so I'm just going to fast forward there. And here it's, and let me stretch this out. Come on. I want line 47. And I've got, like, I make my mouse larger, so it's like working with Hulk hands here. Oh, my gosh, forget it. Uh, fulfillment overdue and lost loan notification letter. Okay, here we go. It's this one here. Sent by email. So let me go ahead and click on edit. Okay, so we're looking at late. Okay, so we have three tabs here. We're on the labels tab right now. Um, what we can do is we can edit the content of the letter. And I'm going to go down here to um, down here a little bit further. So you can change these statements. Um, this is to inform you that the item with the details below, you see how, so I could come in here, I could customize this, and I can change this wording. This is to make you aware. Delete, 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 no. That at work. So you can quickly just change that wording in a letter right here. You can see who was in here, what they changed. Which one did I, here we go. This is to make you aware that the item with the details below, there we go. Um, there are multiple entries of this statement that represent those five different notification types. So um, again, you, this is how you get that different wording in the same letter um, that can change if you do send progressively, uh, progressive um, notifications to borrowers. The same approach can be taken for the charged with fee type and declare as lost type statements. So here's that declared as lost, um, the charge fee types. Now, if I come down here to the template tab, on the template tab, this is where we can see, uh, we see the XSL, you can customize the appearance of letters to make um, other updates if you if you wish. Um, the XSL needs to be adjusted to call any labels that you may have modified. Um, and then on the letter examples tab, this is where you can preview letters in several different ways. Um, here's the default letter. And that's looking at that XML. Um, what's nice is, um, hold on. If I go to preview, you could see preview gives the, um, instead of the XSL you could see, or the XML, you can see, you know, what is gonna show up and then that can drive what you wanna change. 
if your system has generated any letters, and I, I, I couldn't run the job because I couldn't run it on demand, which I found out today, it got moved because I tried to run a, a job right before we started. And I have to report that it is no longer something we can run on demand. We have to do it the day before, I think. Um, so if I was able to generate a letter, I could pull up a letter that was populated with, you know, a name with titles, et cetera. Because this isn't, well, there's something here. It's not that great though. But this can help you um, drive any, make decisions about what content you want to change and how you want to change those letters. Now we did have a change that came up in um, January of 2022. And that is that uh, letters can be configured to come from individual libraries instead of the institution. So that is a bonus. Um, remember, Alma's always changing with those types of things. So a lot of um, customers requested this. Now, there are some caveats about this, uh, this change to Alma, though. So as of January 2022, all institutions can configure Alma so to letters so that letters can aggregate information from multiple libraries, such as borrowing activity letter, courtesy letter, request report letter, overdue and lost no notification. And in this case, a letter will be aggregated and sent per library. So this is telling you where to go, config, fulfillment, general, other settings. And um, what you need to change is separate underscore patron underscore notifications by library from false to true. And I added this slide to, and I know it's a lot of words, um, things to consider before enabling this functionality. So if you have divided this by libraries, and I'm a borrower with, with materials from multiple libraries, I'm gonna get multiple letters from each library. Um, fines, um, activity reports, et cetera. Um, so be aware of that. If fulfillment entities that are not owned by a specific library, such as a fine or fee that's owned by the institution or a request that may be served by multiple libraries, the letter will still come out from the at the institution level. And then if overdue and lost loan profile is conf configured to generate a notification fee, again, several notifications are sent by this profile for different libraries, a fee will be charged for each notification. So if, if you generate notification fees, that's a concern. Okay. So this little tool, oh gosh, I've only got four minutes. Fulfillment, jobs, configuration, and scheduling. I love when we added this to Alma. Um, do, 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 fulfillment. So it's a nice tool to manage your fulfillment jobs. And that's why I couldn't run it on demand because we took out the other option to run a certain job. Um, so borrowing activity reports. Do you want to send those once a month? Do you not want to send them at all? This is where you would activate it and then schedule it. Um, sending courtesy notices. Again, you would activate it here. Um, send them two days before something is due. Um, shelf hold reminders job. So you could have a second notification go out. Remember our hold shelf was set to five days. If I still haven't picked it up and there's two days left, Alma can send another notification. Um, there's that fine fee notification. Anonymization job, do you want to anonymize loans, fines and fees, requests, borrowing requests? So this has grown, you know, over the years. Maybe you're not concerned with anonymizing certain things and you um, want to anonymize other things. This is where you would set it. You would come into the loan anonymization rules. Do you want to anonymize it immediately? Do you want to retain a certain number of loans? Do you want to retain it for a certain amount of time? those kind of settings. Um, here's that loan overdue and lost job. I couldn't run it on demand. I used to be able to run it on demand somewhere else. That's where I wanted to generate that letter. Uh, due date after correction changes. That one should just be active in your environment. So if you ever do make a calendar change, which we're gonna talk about next week, this is where you can um, 
OMA will go in and, and do any cleanup related to it if you're going to be closed on a certain day or shorten your hours kind of a thing. You can see ha requests ha handle expiration step. So items that are sitting on the request shelf too long, this will expire them so that your staff knows to pull them off of the shelf and send them back home, send them to another pickup desk or activate the hold for the next borrower in their queue. Same with booking requests. So quite a number of fulfillment jobs here. For you to um, take a look at removing blocks, activating, deactivating courses related to course reserves. Um, if you don't have there, you'll see there are some other products. Like if you don't have Leganto, you those won't uh, relate to you. But they're all part of this. Um, okay, let's get back in here. So resources in our series dashboard, we do have a few hand hands on exercises for you. If you're so inclined. Links to supplemental training in Alma, we've entered, we've created these, they're called guide me. There are these tools, um, to help. It's a guided training right in Alma. There are some related to fulfillment configuration um, that are similar to the hands-on exercises that I just showed you. If you do any of these guide me's, I would just recommend that you always do them in the sandbox first because there are changes that the guide me's um, make and you don't wanna do that in your production environment. Okay, so that's just your caveat there. Uh, we do have knowledge center articles about various subjects we dis uh, um, discussed today. Um, I had a couple questions. Oh, it's it's right at the top of the hour right now. Is there a table that describes the level of severity for blocks that 01, 02, 03? That's where you go to help ab help about this page. So don't forget that. And I think I was on the old letter. Someone said, isn't that the old letter? The fulfillment overdue and lost loan now. Yep, I need to probably update that. Those letter names still confuse me. <laughs> they still confuse me. Um, I do want to mention we do have a team for premium services. It's a more individualized approach. Um, one on one um, services to customers. They are paid services, individualized training, hands on config, other um, assistance you may need. If you want to do it, that's who you contact premium.services at Ex Libris Group. Now, next week, we're going to be doing a little more about configuration, looking at policies, TOUs, and fulfillment units, calendars, and tools to help configure fulfillment. I am one minute late. I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and I do want to mention that at the end of each session, we do have a series that appears when you close out of the WebEx meeting. I'm always, I read all the comments. So any anything you have to offer, we're always working on improving what we do. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you next week, next Tuesday. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye.